Shalom, good morning, Sister Kate here. Um, we have cold weather coming in next week. It's going to be 14 degrees, I think it said, was going to be the low one of the nights. And I know for well, some of you that's not that cold. But for this area, it is. Um, and so we are in touch with other people who are off-grid and preppers and stuff. And it became a topic of discussion um, on Facebook preparations for this upcoming cold spell and it brings up really good points and of the answers on the the uh, post most people talked about making sure they had their firewood cut and split which you should have done before now but certainly you want to get that done before um, the cold actually hits or generator you know make sure the generator's working check it run it get the fuel for it etc again should already be done but nothing wrong with testing it Right before you're going to need it, make sure you're going to get good performance out of your equipment. Um, and both of those things are really related to generating uh, heat, which is awesome. You do want to generate heat. Your number one heat generator, whether you're on grid or off grid, is your body. Your body is, you know, 98.6. That's pretty warm. Um, so one of the best things to do for cold weather is insulate yourself. And I, I did this because I'm out here in the morning um, filming a video. So I want the best things you can do is wear a hat, retains your body heat. Scarf retains the uh, body heat coming up your body and uh, along your neck. Um, but insulation is really important in cold weather. And you can do a lot of things in your house to insulate. Um, I know most modern American homes have, you know, R or whatever uh, insulation in them to keep you know the heat from the house in but things like windows if you don't have the you know triple pane windows with the air in between them and everything let's just pretend you're like us and you're off grid one thing we can do that helps is just put plastic up get the six mil plastic you know staple it on both sides of the window indoor and out and then if you have them those ridiculous little white bags that they give you at walmart all the time can you can stuff them in that space and then put the plastic over top because what you're doing is you're keeping the warm air inside from touching the cold air outside immediately you know you're giving it a buffer in the space where the window frame is um, so that it doesn't make that transition instantly and that you know the warmth isn't lost to the cold right away you can make snakes for your doors or whatever you want to call them you know some sort of tube shaped thing um, you can put cat litter in the middle sand rocks or you can just stuff the things with those white bags. You can even use a white bag, make it that shape, stuff it with more of them, and put them there if you're, you know, if you're um, on a budget. We roll up towels. We roll up old used towels, and we put them at the base of the door so that air doesn't go under. Because cold air sinks, warm air rises. Um, another thing we've done in the past is to isolate the room with the heater in it, um, put plastic walls up, because at the time the ceiling was not insulated and so the warm air was rising to the uninsulated ceiling touching those cold boards and immediately getting sucked up and lost so um, you can do that with doorways you can do it with window frames you can do it with your own body um, and then recently uh, neo hermit has brought up to us that like our floors are also uninsulated and just putting a carpet down and it's not a nice carpet it's not a th you know really thick plush carpet she put down sort of a because it was the color she wanted a uh, indoor outdoor kind of carpet that was sort of thin and yet she said it made a huge difference um, something else that she did that you can do um, not that expensive is caulk you know caulk all around her windows caulk you know cracks in your floors cold spots um, and keep in mind that your modern furnace is going to dry the air out in your house. So you can do that trick where you, you know, are cooking some kind of water with potpourri in it or however you want to do it on your stovetop in order to put moisture back into the air. Otherwise, it just dries the heck out of your nasal passages and uh, your skin and you're constantly having to moisturize yourself. And, you know, you're always blowing your nose and everything because your modern furnace and is uh, not only heating your air but it's also dehumidifying your air 
when you live off grid you're more in the natural state of humidity in the air around you and so it's not as big of a problem so those are just some of the suggestions for insulating it should be part of your how to keep warm plan and it can help your producing heat stuff be way more effective all right i hope this helped you and gave you something to think about bless you shalom